Welcome to Whiskey and RPGs. My name is Solomon SK, and welcome to another episode of MMO and RPG News Roundup. Anyways, we got a lot of news to cover. Hope you guys got your glasses. I got my little tank up here with your beverage of choice, and let's cover the news together. Cheers to you guys. So the first bit of news comes from MMORPG.com, and it's probably one of the bigger news when it comes to the MMORPG world, but uh, it says Ascent Infinite Realm renamed Elion, or Elion, closed beta coming to Korea April 11th. It goes on to say Bluehole teased some big news for the long in-development Ascent Infinite Realm, and earlier today it finally happened. Air is being renamed Elian Ascent Infinite Realm. And I think they kept the Ascent Infinite Realm because the game was known to be that for such a long time that it probably would hurt the sort of um, search engine optimizations if they completely went with a new name. But I digress. Gone are the tap targeting as well, with Elian opting for full combat or full action combat like Crafton's Terra before it. In my opinion, that's actually not a bad thing at all. Uh, for me personally, I believe that uh, tab targeting is a bit outdated. Uh, that's not to say that I don't enjoy it in general. Uh, I, you know, it depends on the game that I'm playing, right? So, but for the most part, I think going towards a more action-oriented combat system such as Terra or Black Desert Online, I think that's a definite plus. It goes on to say, it looks like Alien is retaining the steampunk fantasy aesthetic, which is a huge plus in my book. This is probably the only reason why I'm super interested in this game. Uh, and the vid video shows off players facing off against steampunk monstrosities as well as a huge mecha-style armor to attack fortresses and more. And even better <laughs> you know you guys know how much i love uh mecha games like mech warrior robotech macross i know i'm digressing but the fact that you are able to get in a mecha style steampunk robot i think yeah that that just makes me want to play this game even more it goes on to read a new website has also been set up touting Alien's three major pillars pillars of gameplay dynamic combat skill customization and competition which refers to realm versus realm match pvp uh which is really cool i definitely do enjoy realm versus realm especially when it comes to games such as guild wars 2 i think they did it very well it goes on to say that closed beta is taking place this april 11th in korea as well i'll try my best to do everything i can to get into the beta but i'm not i'm not holding my breath so we head on over to massivelyop.com i'm still talking about alien uh just to kind of give you a little bit more information about why the changes and whatnot and they go on to say in quote the name Elion is meant to provoke the adventure of exploring a new world and is also the name of the portals that players will be fighting over when striving for dominance of the world with their chosen faction and i will admit when looking at the new trailer that i have playing above me you'll see that big portal that blue circular looking thing with stuff around it it looks very similar to uh what you see in aeon if you remember that game i suppose there's only so many different ways that you could make a portal look uh but it, it definitely seems like it has some aeon influence as well and lastly the game is currently still being tested in south korea and while kakao doesn't include a release plan or a date for the eu and na it does say it's quote still plan to release through Kakao Games, end quote. And I think the implications of that is uh, Kakao Games is, I guess, what do you call it? Western subsidiary or the Western uh, branch of the, of the company that publishes and releases games. And so uh, will this game come out to the US? Highly likely, highly likely. When, I'm not exactly sure, but uh, hopefully we could get it by the end of this year. You know, you never know. Another game that made a huge splash, uh, surprisingly, uh, is a game called Mortar Shell, and this is brought to you by GamesRadar.com. Mortar Shell is a horror action RPG with big Sekiro energy. Watch the reveal trailer here, and I have the trailer playing above me, and it is it is absolutely brutal. 
Uh, this game takes Dark Souls and just cranks up the notch in terms of its violence and gore and, and, and just even the aesthetics is just so much more brutal, I guess. I mean, that's the only reason or that's the only way I could really describe it. But they don't really try to hide the fact that From Software Games has a huge influence on their game as well. But Anyways, it reads on, Mortar Shell is a promising new action RPG heavily inspired by From Software's family of soul titles, and it's coming to PS4, Xbox One, and PC later this year. Formerly or newly formed developer Cold Symmetry, together with publisher Playstack, revealed the game today. Mortar Shell was originally a demo game called Dungeon Haven, which was first shown in 2018, but its scope seemed to have been expanded to match its new name. You play as a humanoid vessel exploring the rotten world inhabited by monsters and men gone mad. Your ultimate goal is to track down hidden sanctums of devout followers and harvest the sacred glands. That, that's <laughs> it's pretty, pretty intense. And again, they're not trying to hide the fact that a lot of From Software's games has a huge influence of what type of game that they've made. Uh, goes on to read as if the trailer wasn't a dead giveaway. Cold Symmetry says Mortar Shell was quote built upon a ruthless traditions of souls like genre combat centers around dodging and parrying attacks like Sekiro. It even has a counter system complete with a red marker. So I'm not going to lie, I typically don't do too well with horror games, uh, with a very few exceptions, uh, such as Resident Evil and the Silent Hill series, to name another. And uh, even though this game looks very interesting, I'm hoping that I'm not too squirmish to play it. Don't get me wrong, it looks like a very awesome, brutal looking game. And uh, if you want to get your hands on a copy, it does say Mortar Shell is scheduled to launch in third quarter of 2020 or sometime between July 1st and September 30th. So I know a lot of you are huge Lord of the Ring fans out there. And even though you'd like to play an MMO version of it, the one that's out right now, it's it's kind of dated, let's be honest. And is it a good game? I, I don't know. I haven't really played it in a while, but uh, luckily you're getting a new MMO. So the next news comes from MassivelyOP.com. As Amazon's Lord of the Rings MMO is hiring, online shooter Crucible gets a launch window. It goes on to read, Amazon is putting a call out for a senior character artist to join the team and work to flesh out the inhabitants of the setting. It goes on to read, this posting lines up with several from last year that showed the studio ramping up work on the project. Amazon joined forces with China's Liu, I believe that's how you say it, to create the massively multiplayer title for both PC and console. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm a little hesitant. A red flag kind of goes up, on, honestly, when I read that part. I mean, without getting a little too, I guess political uh we all have seen what happened to blizzard when um bending the knee towards their chinese overlords and i'm really hoping that such deals uh with a chinese company on amazon's part won't compromise sort of the uh quality of the game i guess we'll just have to wait and see uh but anyways that's just my take and it goes on to read its online shooter Crucible. See, I didn't even know they were making an online shooter. Uh, but Crucible has, fin has a, finally has a launch window. The studio is going to be releasing it next month. Crucible wields together parts of PvE shooters in a battle royale while also adding in a quote game master end quote who runs interference with Twitch during matches. This could actually really be interesting, especially if you are somebody who likes watching Twitch streams or a Twitch stream it yourself. I know a lot of interacting games have gained, gained a lot of popularity uh, over these past few years, and we'll, we'll see how this one pans out. We head on back over to MMORPG.com. Squad-based MMO shooter Enlisted gets public playtest today on PC. It goes on to read, the game is described as, quote, a new squad-based MMO shooter game reconstructing World War II battles, end quote. You can apply for the test here. The play test will bring you to the suburbs of the town of Volor... I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce that. Uh, during the fiercest days of 
the Battle of Moscow and will allow players to try one invasion mode map and two domination mode maps. Invasion mode is set so that one team is trying to storm the heavily fortified positions while the other defends. Domination mode is a classic team battle over three controlled points. Now you could definitely check out their website here and I do apologize it's cut off here over on the right. But even still after after reading everything I'm, I'm a little skeptical about the about the MMO part of this game. So I took a look at the comments and it says right here and definitely take this with a grain of salt 140 players max in a fight more in the not quite an MMO category me thinks and and if this is true, if this is only a game where it caps out at 140 players, I'm not sure if you could really categorize that as an MMO. I mean, I believe Planetside has those type of numbers too, and I don't think people really consider that as an MMO. So, I don't know. I guess we'll see. It's definitely interesting, and um, the scheme is still in its public testing uh, phase, so we'll wait and see what happens next. So sticking with MMORPG.com, Valnir Rock, I think I'm saying that correctly, receives a big performance and graphics update. And the reason why I wanted to cover this is because this is another online game that I never heard of and I'd like to know more about it. But it goes on to read, updates have been implemented on performance and graphics or graphics side of things along with some minor fixes. A 50% discount starts on April 6th at 10 a.m. Pacific time as well. And heading on over to their sort of uh, game description page, uh, it is considered an MMO game, MMOG. Release date still says 2018. They probably should update update that here. But uh, um, but here are some interesting things about this game. Valnir Rock is a multiplayer survival role playing game in a Viking setting, with quests by best-selling author Giles Christian, and. Here at the bottom, experience a Viking lore as you complete quests written by award-winning author Giles Christian or take your story into your own hands by creating your own quests for a completely customized experience. And I have to admit, that definitely piqued my interest. Uh, I don't think I've ever played an online game, uh, MMO or otherwise, that it actually allows you to make your own quests. And so I'm really curious how this is going to pan out, what that entails, and um, when I check it out, I'll let you guys know. I have to admit, I thought this one was really cool too, even if it's a game that maybe isn't really marketed towards somebody like me. I don't know, I'm just assuming a lot here, but uh, but anyways, Harry Potter meets Stardew RPG Witchbrook summons a new look and it's gorgeous. And yeah, I really like that old retro style that you see here in this picture. It's no secret that Stardew Valley is a game that's been immensely successful, selling millions and millions of copies, and it's still kind of you know falls under the radar compared to other i guess triple a titles out there and who knows maybe uh this game could also follow in its footsteps but it goes on to read which brook that harry potter inspired rpg that lets you live the life of a magic school student has a new look and it's and it's enchanting i do have to agree it is very enchanting developer cuttlefish first revealed which brook back in 2017 but it does go on to read that Cuttlefish still isn't ready to give out a release date or planned platforms for Witchbrook, but it has open signups for a newsletter if you want to be first in line for more info. It's a really charming looking game. Um, yeah, I, I will admit that. And uh, when it comes out, I mean, I'll definitely be giving it a try just to see what it's like. And real quick again, I did add a smaller segment within the MMO and RPG News Roundup called PSAs. And again, these are just really small short stories that I wanted to cover, uh, such as updates, beta key giveaways, events, new content, things of that nature. Things that um, I really think is worth covering, but that doesn't really require a whole in-depth analysis or a lengthy explanation. And the first PSA is about Fantasy Star Online 2. That confirms that a PC version is still arriving in the spring, and this is brought to you by MassiveTheOP.com. But yeah, it just goes on to say that the PC is still on track, and the dates simply haven't been announced yet. And you can see their official uh, response to another fan uh, via Twitter. Sticking with MassiveTheOP.com, Fallout 76 PC players can scoop up a game copy on Steam for free. So here's a nice surprise. The new Fallout 76 was coming to Steam, but we didn't know that existing players could claim a free copy to play when Wastelanders rolls out. 
I know Bethesda hasn't been receiving a whole lot of good news for the company, uh, especially last year, but I think this is a really cool thing that they've done for its existing fans and players, especially for those who shelled out all that cash for the Ultimate Edition. And, and they did get a pretty cool helmet, uh, but the game ended up not being to everybody's expectations, but that's neither here nor there. So next we head on over to MMORPG.com. See if these coming to Steam full cross play with Xbox and Windows 10. So the title is pretty self explanatory, but it does go on to read. You can actually wishlist the game today if you're interested in grabbing it on Steam. The anniversary edition right now on Windows 10 and Xbox is $20, but there's no indication if that price will apply to the Steam version at launch. In fact, the Steam version doesn't even have a price at present. For those of you who like MMOs and a Battle Royales, or there's a game out there that actually tries to combine both, coming from MMORPG.com, Battle Royale MOBA RPG Hunters Arena Legends starts closed beta signups. It does go on to read the Battle Royale MOBA RPG Hybrid Hunters Arena Legends begins closed beta signups. Here's what you need to know. The second and final closed beta test is going to be conducted from April 22nd through April 26th. Signups are now open. And as you can do so here, which is a link, it's slated to hit Steam early access later this year. The second closed beta testing phase will be held across three regions north america europe and asia and will run for five days starting on april 22nd as indicated above so if you're interested you could definitely check out their webpage and they actually do have all the times listed for their beta and other questions that you may have as well so heading on over to gematsu.com genshin impact uh, uh i'm not gonna even try to pronounce that i'm sorry i'm just not good with these names especially ones that sound like they're from a different country uh but just to let you know they actually did release a new trailer for this particular character and you already know that i'm pretty excited about this game because i haven't really played uh an anime RPG in a while. Heading on back over to MMORPG.com, Ashes of Creation Alpha 1 testing begins in May. So if you are a backer of this game, you still have some awesome alpha coming your way. This news comes from a letter posted to the community from the creative director, Stephen Sheriff, I believe that's how you say it. I do apologize if not. Now, I know a lot of you are kind of skeptical about crowdfunded games, especially with the problems that games uh, such as Star Citizen has been having, and the fact that Chronicles of Illyria is pretty much dead now. Uh, but it seems like at least with this particular game, they're making a lot of progress, and the ball does seem to be rolling. So if you are somebody who has invested in this game, you have some alphas coming your way. Another Rift story. Like uh, this totally blows my mind. I didn't, I didn't think I'd be covering this game again, but. Over at MassivelyOP.com, Rift activates Frozen Waters Battle Pass in Bonus Experience Event. So I covered the Bonus Experience Event last time, but I didn't know they actually went with the Battle Pass system. It goes on to read, Gamago, or Gamago, however you pronounce it, uh, activated the third season of the game's Battle Pass this week, calling it Frozen Waters. Players can pursue daily and weekly quests to work their way up a reward track and earn housing items and other goodies as well. Heading on over to MMORPG.com, summon uh, home, home uh, this thing, companions and lineage too. I'm sorry, I think this is worth mentioning, but I have no idea what this is or even how to say it. Uh, it seems like a pretty big deal, so if you're a lineage 2 fan, uh, sorry for the brief mention here, but yeah. <laughs> And lastly, for MassivelyOP.com, Arc Age kicks off the Lantern Festival as a tribute to the Lost. This event is running until April 23rd. Players who wish to earn rewards should look out for that mysterious Yada Lantern floating around by 2 p.m., 8 p.m., and 1 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. You can subsequently light the lantern to earn three event coins, which you could turn in to buy rugs, lantern decorations, and similar trinkets. And that does it for today's MMO and RPG News Roundup. I do appreciate if you made it with me so far. The watch time does help with the algorithms. And again, I hope you guys continue to hold down to four and stay safe out there. And uh, hope you guys ha also have a wonderful weekend. And until then, hope you guys have a blessed night. And I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.